Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on transmission line theory. For this video, I'm going to explain how can we actually apply Kirchhoff voltage law and also Kirchhoff current law to solve the circuit model of a transmission line. On the part one series discussion on the transmission line theory, I have concluded that transmission line is actually a distributed element. A distributed element means that at any point of the transmission line, the voltage, the current, and the impedance can be very drastic different. So because of this, technically, we are not able to apply Kirchhoff voltage law or also Kirchhoff current law, or even using lump element to represent the transmission line. And hence, over this video, I'm going to explain when or why we are able to use KVL and also KCL okay, to solve the circuit analysis and also why we are able to represent the transmission line using lump element. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part two series discussion on transmission line theory. If you're keen to know more about transmission line theory, stay tuned over this channel. Okay, you are going to see more video under the playlist in the description then you will have a better idea or concept on transmission line theory this is my email if you have any question regards on today's discussion please drop me an email before i continue i'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel Guys, it really been some time since I received the last comment. Okay, I think comment is extremely very important to me so that I know what content to share with you guys and also how to improve my delivery. Okay, once again, I hope I can receive the comment soon. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. During the part one series discussion, okay, as I mentioned, the transmission line, the length, is typically many, many times bigger or larger than the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave that will be propagated in this transmission line. And because of this, as you can see that I'm drawing a sine wave, you can see that there are so many maximum and minimum points along the transmission line. Hence, the voltage, the current and impedance actually varies. And hence, because of this, we conclude that the transmission line is actually a distributed element and hence we are not able to apply Kirchhoff voltage law, Kirchhoff current law or even use lump element to represent this transmission line. Hence, how or when we are able to use all this circuit analysis to represent the transmission line is when we actually cut this transmission line into a very small piece. Okay, the length of this transmission line then will be significant equals to the wavelength for the electromagnetic wave or even this length can be even much much smaller as compared to the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave that will be propagated along the transmission line as you can see from here and hence because of this we are able to use lump element to represent the transmission line and also because of this we are able to apply Kirchhoff voltage law and also Kirchhoff current law to do the analysis of this transmission line. Okay, so over here, you can see that this will be the Z. And on the other part here, which is Z plus delta Z, which is represent over here. So over here, you can see that I actually use lump element to represent a small portion of a transmission line. I have not really explained how can I actually derive this schematic of the transmission line. So this video, I'm also going to suggest or explain how can I actually derive the lump element to represent the transmission line. Okay, so let's take a look again. Okay, so this very small portion of the transmission line, basically you can imagine that there are cable. So this is the first transmission line. This is the second transmission line. You know that basically the transmission line has a resistance and also an inductor. Okay, so basically this represent the first conductor and this section here represents the second conductor. The resistor represents the loss of the conductor. And also we have the inductor, which is in series. 
Okay, so this is will be the two part. When two conductors they are very close together, what happened here is basically we are going to have a capacity effect and there will be a coupling. Okay, so therefore we will have this C and basically we have also this conductor. Okay, so basically this will be the overall slump element to describe the schematic under this short session over here. From here, I can also conclude R, I can actually add this two R into one. Okay, and the inductor, I can also add this two into one. And hence, therefore, I can simplify this lump element okay, into this form here. Okay, so this will be the point at C, okay, which means that the point over here, okay, I can represent by this lump element to represent the transmission line. When I actually want to represent okay, at Z plus delta Z, okay, which means that it's over this point here, then what I need to do is basically I have factored in okay, all this into the lump element. So basically this will be the lump element to use to represent the transmission line, a small section of the transmission line. Maybe I should include this. Okay, so now I'm going to explain on the Kirchhoff voltage law and Kirchhoff current law. Okay, so let's understand a little bit more. Okay, so this will be the outcome. Okay, so this will be the voltage on the left-hand side at the Z point. This will be the voltage at the Z plus delta Z. Okay, so basically you can see that the voltage is slightly different. Okay, and also the current. Okay, so basically this will be the current. And over here will be represented by another current here. So let's understand how we can apply Kirchhoff voltage law. Okay, so let's start by discuss on Kirchhoff voltage law. Okay, we can apply Kirchhoff voltage law when we draw a closed loop. So when we actually draw a closed loop, we actually can use Kirchhoff voltage law. Over here, okay, you can see that I will be using this, this, and also this, and the voltage over here will be from here. Okay, let's take a look on this applying this Kirchhoff voltage law. Okay, so over this VZ will be from this point. Okay, how can I obtain the voltage? Will be IZ multiplied by R delta Z, which is shown over here. Okay, over here, okay, so basically the impedance will be JWL. Okay, so JWL will be represent the impedance. So therefore, I have this JWL to represent the impedance. And basically, I also need to do this Delta Z, and again, the current that flow through the inductor will be IC, which is over here. Okay, next over here, I need to obtain the voltage, okay, which is this point here. Okay, so this will be the first equation after I actually apply the Kirchhoff voltage law. Next, I'm going to explain on Kirchhoff current law. Okay, so this will be my next slides here. So this will be my Kirchhoff current law. Okay, so over here, you can see that this will be in, this tree will be up. So this will be so-called a positive term over here. The rest will be all negative term. Okay, so this will be the current because when current flow in series, the current is remain intact, they will be the same. So therefore, I have this IZ term over here. So next, I will take a look over here. So how can I actually find the current? Okay, so basically, this is the conductance. What I need to do is basically I have the voltage, I multiply by the conductance. Okay, what I actually will obtain will be the current. So this will be the current that will be flowing through this path, okay, over this path here. So I done with this. So next, let's move on to the capacitor branch. Again, I have the voltage and this is basically the conductance. Okay, so what I need to do is basically I just multiply them together. Okay, so the conductance of capacitor will be JWC, if you still remember. So therefore, I have this JWC over here. Okay, and I also need to include the delta Z. Okay, and this will be the voltage that fall over this point here. And again, this term here will be describing the amount of current that will flow past the capacitor. And last but not least, this will be another point, okay, which already denote by the question so-called the derivative of the skip. The question here, so basically this will be my second equation, okay, which is after I apply the Kirchhoff current law. Okay, so I probably need another video to further explain on this, why we want to achieve this Kirchhoff voltage law and also Kirchhoff current law. 
Okay, but with this, I'd like to end my discussion for this video. I want to do a quick conclusion. In order to use lump element and also apply KBL and KCL, I need to take a very short session of the transmission line. When I actually take a very short session of the transmission line, okay, the length of the transmission line can be comparable to the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave that is propagated along the transmission line, or the length can be significantly very small. Okay, the length of the transmission line is very small as compared to the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave. And hence, because of this, I'm able to apply KVL and KCL and also use this lump element to represent the transmission line. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I see you soon on the part 3 series discussion on the transmission line theory. See you.